Mina Tolu is going to, that I don't speak Maltese. <laughs> that was good though, wasn't it? Okay. Mina Tolu is going to speak next about an issue that is very close to my heart. She, Mina is going to speak about memory and about raising the voices of those who others would prefer to silence. As you know, Mina is from Malta, but more than that, Europe. Mina is an activist living in Berlin and working with an organization called Transgender Europe, an organization that supports trans activists across the continent and also in the world beyond. Part of what Transgender Europe does links to um, what the last speaker spoke about, and that is trans murder monitoring research which I wish wasn't a thing, which I wish wasn't such an official thing. And what Transgender Europe has been doing for the past eight years is collecting data of all those brothers and sisters who have been killed. This monumental and harrowing task is still, as Mina says, the tip of the iceberg, because a lot of times the media will obscure the specifics of those people's lives and indeed their struggles. Next month, Mina is launching a campaign to coincide with the Transgender Day of Remembrance on November 20th to remind us of some of those who we have lost in the past year. Mina, we at One Young World are honored to support you in the work that you do and are very looking forward to your speech. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone, and thank you, Fatima, for the introduction. I thought I was going to wonder what you all thought as you saw me. I thought what you would think about my gender, but I spoke about that earlier, so that's covered. Um, I am a gender non-conforming person, and as a European trans person, I am more privileged than my trans siblings in other parts of the world. In Malta, where I was raised, we now have one of the best laws globally that respects the human rights of trans and intersex people. But it hasn't always been like this. Trans people are those who have a gender identity that is different to the sex assigned at birth. Some countries, have laws that allow the change of the marked gender on birth certificates, passports, identity documents in quick and accessible ways. Unfortunately, besides Malta, there are only a few countries in Europe that have humane procedures in place. Ten countries in Europe don't even allow a trans person to change their document. Many others require a psychological diagnosis and medical or surgical interventions. Discrimination against trans people takes many forms, and institutional discrimination is embedded into the structures of our societies. The hoops, hurdles, and barriers that trans people face when seeking recognition, respect, and appreciation are unimaginable. Did you know, for example, that the World Health Organization considers a trans identity to be a mental disorder? Or that in 23 countries in Europe, a trans person needs to be sterilized to change their name or their gender? This means that we have to choose between keeping the ability to have children or to have legal documents that reflect who we are. In a world that so clearly discriminates, how can we achieve change? Grassroots movements and lobbying organizations have their parts to play, but so do individuals, global businesses, and governments. Last June, I gave a workshop on campaigning for trans rights at the European Transgender Council, where a young Lithuanian trans activist presented the first ever trans campaign held in the country. Supporting the creation of this campaign was important to me, to see young people given a space to talk about their stories, to talk about their experience about how the Lithuanian legal situation, one of the worst in Europe, affects them personally. It proved to be powerful in Lithuania too. 
it got 54,000 views and almost 2,000 people signed their petition calling for legal gender recognition. Sometimes people seem to only be aware of celebrity trans people and do not realize that they might know trans people themselves. We can be your colleagues, a teammate, or the person driving the taxi that brought you here. Everyday people living everyday lives, but with many challenges. A few years ago, my twin sent a package to their friend. He could not pick it up from the post office because his appearance didn't match the gender marked on his ID card. Just last month, while on holiday, I was shouted at and asked to leave the toilet I was in. It felt unsafe to be there. When you're faced with this on a daily basis, you start to check yourself and the places you go to in order to avoid discrimination. Think of your journey to One Young World. How many times did you have to show proof of identification? How many times did you have to use a toilet? Imagine if showing your passport or picking up a package at the post office makes people question who you really are. I'm running out of time. Um, <laughs> According to the Trans Murder Monitoring Project that Fatima mentioned, this year alone, 185 trans people have been reported murdered. And of the 2,115 reported murdered since 2008, 90% were trans women and 65% were sex workers. We all have multiple identities. I am trans, European, young, middle class and able-bodied. The issues I mentioned earlier are not new and the underlying problems of discrimination against many of us are problems we have to fight together. So when society still favors white, cisgender, straight, able-bodied men above everybody else, how do the rest of us fight? Let's find our common struggles and unite together so we can begin to overcome the violence and hatred towards any form of diversity in our communities.